I'm Usha Rangman, birth and artist, currently living in London, but I'm from Madras. Um, she is my junior mystery at Ritu, Ritu Rajagopalan. Her mother, Meena Rajagopalan, also my student, who's going to do Arigator next year. Jay Sri Sundaresan, she did Arigator recently. She's also living here. Um, Gayatri Jayanthan, she did Arigator in July in Chidambaram. She learned here, but she did Arangetam in Chidambaram in the temple. And Ahalya Pushparaja, my first student to do Arangetam here in London. She trained under me here. First student to do Arangetam. She did in 2002. When did you come to London? I came in 1996. And you've been teaching since then? Well, initially I wasn't into teaching so much. I was performing. And uh, I was teaching my daughter. I was living in St. John's Wood. I was happily teaching my daughter, only daughter, and I was traveling and performing. And then came uh, Ahalya, somehow through some contact, I don't know who sent her. And uh, she was the only student at that time. I was teaching her. She did Arigatum in 2002. And then uh, after seeing her Arigatum, so many people were asking me for teaching. Then I moved to Hatha, Pinner. And then uh, Students started coming to me. How old were you when you started dancing? Uh, about seven years old. But with Atosha? Uh, no, I learned with another teacher before. Um, and then after a while, I... Changed. When you came to me, you were, I think, 12, 13? About 13, 14, yeah. yeah. So what made you decide to do the Arrogate? Um, I think when I was a lot younger, the topic had come up, but at that stage, it never really interested me. Um, I don't think I was ever a person to do it for the sake of it. I think when I started learning with Usha, Auntie, and um, I somehow, my interest grew, and I thought I'd take it as a challenge, as an opportunity to help myself develop as a dancer as well. And I think with the experience of doing an hour engagement, I've learned so much more about Bharatanatyam, and it's taught myself a lot about myself as well. So I think it's definitely a very good opportunity and I'm really grateful to have done it with a very good teacher like Usha. So where are your roots, your Indian roots? Um, I'm not from India actually, my oh, parents sorry. are from Sri Lanka, but um, Indian music and dance is very much uh, a part of culture there as well, and a lot of uh, Sri Lankan children here uh, learn music and dance and, as well, so it's very popular amongst our community as well. So you don't do any like Sri Lankan dance, like candy or anything? Uh, no, not candy and dance, no. I've, I've always stuck with Bharatanatyam. So what made you choose Bharatanatyam? I think when I was very young, um, I went to a, a concert or maybe a, an hour engagement with family friends, um, and I really liked it. And I used to also watch Indian sort of movies as well um, and see the actresses sort of do their semi-classical sort of dancing, and I think that appealed to me. And my parents saw that interest and wanted to develop it as well, so um, that's how I got introduced. Do you dance professionally? Um, no, I haven't taken it on as a profession, um, but it's still a very uh, a passion of mine, so I like to continue it when I can and perform. I still try to take lessons as well. So do you still teach her? Yes. And do you create performances for your students? Do yes, you? I do. What kind of performances? Uh, it depends on uh, the theme. I see what the organization or the festival um, is about, and then I choose a the theme, then I, I choose the choreographies, then I decide the students who take part in that. And you are a dancer yourself? Yes. Um, do you still perform? Yes, I do. And what school of Bhattanathan do you come from? My guru, Sri Adya Lakshman, is uh, is from Kalakshetra. He was a teacher there, a performing artist, and I learned under him uh, in Madras. I was called Chennai. Uh, totally. Did you have any other guru? I learned Abhinaya with Srimati Kalanidhi Narayan in Madras. And how do you find the difference between the dancing here and the dancing in India? Hmm. See, I try my best to teach them in the way they do in India. I have my institute in Madras also. Before moving to UK, 
I, even now the institution is going on. It is called Kala Sagra Chennai. And I started the branch here, Kala Sagra UK. My sister continues to teach there. And as, I try my best to teach the way I did in Madras. But here I slightly change because when I teach young children born and brought up here, I have to think about their background, their upbringing. So I modify slightly. But when I teach adult students, I teach them the way I, I do in Madras and the way I do in Madras. So that's what they like it too. That's the way they like it too. Is that the way you like it? Yes, definitely. Have you been to Madras? Yes, I have been. Of course, I have been and I to Chidambaram. So I have been to India uh, once or twice. Um, it's the way because uh, I learned from the small age, uh, age of four. Uh, I'm from Srinagar as well. And uh, uh, when I come to UK, I was searching for Indian dance teachers, especially to get the uh, root of the culture, this, the perfect dance. Um, so I'm blessed with the perfect guru, I can say. <laughs> but you don't perform professionally, but you perform quite often still, don't you? Yes, not professionally, because I have just had my Anagetum in July. So. Um, but I would like to perform in the future. And what made you decide to do it in India? Okay, uh, there are some two, three reasons. Because um, I want to have a dance um, like a prayer, more like a prayer. It's a famous temple, the Lord Nataraja Temple in, in Chidambaram. He's the one king of the dancers. And um, it's more like um, offering my prayer to him. Uh, to give me th this kind of opportunity because I had a break for four years after my wedding and having two kids and I, again I start to continue the dance and um, yeah, it's more like there's no external factors such as spotlights or something to enhance my dance it's purely uh, dance is based on the standard so when we decided my teacher and myself, we were have, going to have it in India. My teacher was very keen to deliver a high standard on, the, on that day. And, uh, and the people who live there are local people, and they often have a chance to watch the very good standard of dance, because of Nathya and the festivals, they take place there. And often, uh, they, they, they are well known about the dance. So I think my, me and my teacher have succeeded on the day, and it's almost uh, all the credit goes to my teacher for giving me this opportunity. So, how did you prepare your student for an Indian performance of Indian musicians? Did you go over there for quite a long time? So, as I told you, I have my institute in Madras also. There, I have a set of musicians who regularly perform for the students in Madras. And they accompany me when I perform outside of Madras also. When I performed in Mexico, I invited them to Madras. When I traveled in other, other countries, I always invited them. So they were ready to perform for her. So I took her one week before. We prepared here the choreographies. I trained her for the Anagate drum. Then I sent them the music in advance with the lyrics and notations. They were ready to practice with her. We had five days of intensive practice in Madras. Then together with the musicians, we went to Chinambaram. There we practiced one day before the Arangetram. The next day she performed the Arangetram. Yes. It, it required a lot of planning and uh, preparation. Yeah. Can you say something? Uh, no, no, that's fine. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, as my teacher said, it's, it's required a lot of planning. And I would say a teacher planned almost 99.9% .9 of my Arangetram, everything. Because I don't have any contacts in India, she has done everything for me, and um, she has arranged the uh, temple premises for my Angetam. And uh, though we enjoyed the the day really, because it's a memorable day for my teacher as well. Because the first Angetam she had based on all tradition of the day. Is that like uh, people who have in the ancient days, like a temple performance, um, and there's no uh, change of costumes. I just with only one costume for the whole program. It's like 
and there is no uh, called um, glossy brochures or anything and it's uh, just we invited the day before some people uh, issuing a leaflet simply that there is going to be an arangeta in the following night and um, there's no spotlight effect on there's nothing to uh, no no glamour no 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 special um, special attraction or the audience was from the temple people who came to the temple they came to see the performance we didn't know any of them uh, we just invited the day before giving some pamphlets people were happy to come it was, uh, it was a very a special, special uh, event, special uh, program. And we are surprised with the feedback from the people who were there. They watch, even they don't know me, and they are not my relatives or friends. And they were there because of the quality of the dance. And they were there from the start to end. Some families, they sit on the floor, even it doesn't have any carpet on it sit on the sand actually, on the rough stones, and they watch my alligator. And uh, the highly rememberable event is like, um, it's so rewarding for me. It's like, on the following day, I went to Tanjur, to Pradeshwar Temple, and uh, we were finished our prayers and coming along the temple, and one family came and talked to my husband. She danced last night in Chinandara. And yeah, he said yes, and they were so happy to see me, and they appreciated me, and they were talking about their daughter and uh, how she's good. she's learning the dance, and they said to her daughter, "You should dance like her one day." That's what they said to her daughter in front of me. I think it's worth it for all the hard works that I have undergone. So, uh, yes. You have children. Yeah, my daughter is four years old and my son is three years old. And she started? Uh, she is going to be <laughs> shortly. She's, she's just started to learn from uh, my actions and uh, yeah, she's already learning ballet. Uh, yeah, I send her because she, she wants to learn ballet because uh, she's here, she's studying here, so her friends are going and she wants to learn. And uh, when she looked at my dad, she said, it's too difficult because it's got a lot of food words and uh, you have a lot of expressions, mommy. I, I don't know whether I can do it. She said, I said, yeah, you will, you will. One time you will do it. <laughs> so, uh, yes. So talking about daughters, you are going to be the next one, don't you? Uh, yeah. How long have you been dancing? Five years. Yes. And did you study with uh, Ushanti? So what do you feel listening to all these um, memories of the allegations? Would you like to do one? Yeah, definitely. So you are also going to do one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's your mum's message. Yeah. Yes. Do you encourage her? Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you prepare for your planning? Just started uh, um, planning it uh, next year, mid next year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's a long process. And um, it is it is like a, I think our patron was like a graduation in that form of art, and my humble prayer would be to do justice to it. Um, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of stamina is required, and um, yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm working towards it, and uh, hopefully I think we can succeed. And I have a very good guru who is constantly encouraging me. And my family also supports me through and through. So I hope we have a good year and succeed in what I'm coming forward. Yeah. And where which uh, venue are you going to be doing this? At the Bank Theatre. This Bank Theatre, this is in Hades. Yes. It's mm -hmm. like a big theatre. It is, it is a big theatre. Yeah, the magnanimity <laughs> of it sometimes <laughs> shakes me. <laughs> so, how are you preparing that for it? See, when I start preparing for an engagement, I discuss with the students what they would like to do. I see to it that there is variety in the selection of compositions, the theme, raga, tala, and also I keep in mind the audience. Some, some parents will tell me that they would have mixed audience. Then in that case, I think of the composition that would be appreciated by most of them. And then, uh, 
Once I decide the items, I start preparing them initially one by one. I, I, I teach them one by one, I do the choreographies. And as they progress, I see how I can embellish, how I can improve on every choreography. And then the intensive starts about two, three months before. The last month is really tough. They go through <laughs> extensive training, intensive training. I, that is how I started with Ahalya. When we discussed the items, uh, she, um, her father wanted to have as many Tamil compositions as possible. Right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. But then uh, we decided to have a terrible journey. Yeah. And then uh, you did one or two other. In Sanskrit also you did. Yeah, Srimanarayana. Srimanarayana she did. Uh, so I wanted to have variety. Even in the first Arigatama, I, I told her, Look, we need to have, even though you, you like Tamil, we should have a variety uh, in the selection of languages, the compositions, the theme and so on. Till now, I stick to that. When she performed in Nataraja temple, I wanted to have compositions um, on Nataraja. I did a special choreography on Nataraja about the deity, describing the cosmic dance uh, on Nataraja. And she wanted to have composition of all deities. So, um, we prepared a list, okay, we do not have on Saraswati, so we introduced the shlokam on Saraswati and so on. And, um, and uh, for me now, we are still planning, it's in a planning process, yeah. we haven't decided yeah. yet. Yeah. When I decided for Jayashri, uh, when I decided for her item, um, the last minute we changed one composition on Muruga, because her father-in-law liked the composition. I said, okay, you go. Yeah, he, that was his favorite song. Favorite song. She brought one bhajan in Vrindavan Sanaga. She loved it, she wanted me to do that. So I prepared that. And uh, another student, when she wanted to do her anget, her mother asked for one special Telugu composition, a uh, very popular composition. So I did choreography for uh, that. Uh, for that anget, that was a special choreography. And for Meena, I'm doing one uh, Meenakshi. Yeah. Goddess Meenakshi. I'm in that goddess. Incidentally, that is her favorite composition as well. The way did you have your language? Treatments were at Theatre. Okay. So, um, That's quite big as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> very, yeah, very fresh in my memory. She <laughs> did in Logan Hall. Logan Hall. Oh, so yes. That's quite intimate. Yeah, the album is quite large, but it's still it, it kind of yes. way it goes yeah. down to lots of the it center. Nine seventy five, and it was full. Mm. It was full when we finished the arrangement. Street people were sitting there. We finished around at eleven o'clock or so. Oh. It was still full. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of interest I see in India. That's something special. Okay, Do you don't see that in India. Uh, recently, I haven't seen arrangements in India. I saw two years ago. Uh, it was f just friends and family. Outsiders do not come to see the program. Here, I will be invite uh, others who are not uh, familiar with Bharatanatyam. We see to it that we invite others also, not just family and friends. Yeah, that was when you were asking what you see the difference between that and India. Mm -hmm. Yes, an Indian audience is generally the set that's very much in the know of the dance. I'm not saying people don't, but generally you have those very much in the know of the dance come from that background and obviously they have the cultural background, they know maybe the stories to some extent. So they're looking at something slightly different when, with the dancer on stage. Whereas here I think you're dancing to a... So as a dancer and as a teacher, as a choreographer, uh, you have to look at the audience and what you, how you're choreographing a piece. And it's very different and uh, after my own patron, there were a lot of men who came up and said that was the first or maybe the second performance that they've been to, but you know, they're just only beginning to understand all the complexities, and it was very much appreciated. And I just thought, I, and they wouldn't have normally gone to one back home. Maybe their interest was more in music or instrumental or something, and, and for them to then come to see a dance performance, I think it really brought it home. So here, people would then go and see something that maybe they wouldn't back home. Maybe because there's so many performances, or maybe here it is fewer, and I don't know, there's more opportunity for more different type of people to come and watch your performance. So, yeah, there's a difference there. And 
Where did the other musicians come from? The musicians, all to us. Local musicians. Local musicians from here. Yeah. These were musicians trained in India, who oh, moved in UK as we have moved here. And uh, they are prof professional level. So I invite them to perform. But one other thing I want to say, uh, in my early terms, I do a small demonstration, which I normally don't do in India. You yourself? No, my, the, the students do the demo, but uh, somebody will present it. Yeah, it's, it's, you just do a pre-recorded few lines explaining the dance. And we explain the whole dance using gestures and expressions. In, it's a little summary. It helps the audience to understand better. And the response to that was really very, very good, even for uh, the British audience who had come, who had absolutely no idea of anything, of in some even watching the dance for the very first time. And obviously, our image from then you're doing it at such a high level with so many complexities involved. They saw the demo really allowed them to get a picture of it all and then to actually enjoy the dance because they understood it as it progressed from one point to the next because of the little summary. So that's quite unique with the Shabushaji. I really enjoy that. And from a performance point of view, I think, because I had written all the stuff for the demo myself and with the teacher's help, obviously, and um, it helped me understand it. And doing that little bit of demo helps the audience engage better. So how did the experience change your life? Uh, so just doing it was an absolute dream. Um, like I said earlier to you, I started learning to dance at a very young, four and a half. And it's very much a tradition in India. Parents uh, got me a teacher and I started learning dance and vocal music. And I just did it more by rote at that point. It's not till I came to this country and started with Shoji about five years ago as a mature student that I really fell in love with it. More because of all the knowledge that she imparts during the actual class, more than just the dance itself, all of that. Uh, that's, it's had a huge impact, so much so that, you know, I really, really got myself involved in it in a bigger way, actually going back, looking at things, and now with the media and the internet, and so many things that you can, you can it's just amazing. You can see so many dances. Somebody was danced in Chennai yesterday, YouTube, you can just watch it with a press the button, uh, has really gives you access to so much more. So that has had a big influence, but it's so much so that I'm more engaged in the dance now in every aspect. And also my own daughter learns from Shaji as well, she's 12. So it was hugely motivational, both my son who also learns vocal music and my daughter. And you know, I can see that, I think she aspires to it more, I think it's changed the way they look at things. What they need to work to. So. so it's interesting to have children that are doing it, but did your parents do it? My, no, neither my mom or dad have learned maybe circumstances and what they came from. Maybe they have had their cousins or somebody learn, but they've just. My mother's learned music, but not dance. But it's just something maybe they wanted for me. They got me started, and that's where it all started. So I'm really grateful. In spite of them not having the opportunity, they still thought it absolutely essential. I think it's a very cultural thing as well. And similarly, I, I both, uh, both my kids are learning some form of the traditional art because here that's a big way of trying to impart that in that Indian link to them culturally. So, did you see that difference? Like in India, perhaps that cultural link wasn't so important because they're all living it. But over here, that culture link is very, very important. Yeah. For, see, if you see, father, we live away from India, mm -hmm. we cling to our dance, our traditions, our music, and our cultural heritage. So you can see that, go to America, they do bhajans and they do, they are more into uh, arts and cultural uh, activities. So, for Indians, I think they take it for granted. They, it's yeah. part of their life. Yes, yes. So when you live in India, you don't think so much about it's it. Around it. You don't yeah. take the oh, extra yeah. effort. They get the culture to work. You don't take that conscious effort in India. It's part of your life. The girls go to dance class every day. They go to music class every day. So it's normal. But here you have to take that extra effort to go to dance class or to take your child to class. And 
take the children to show us so that they appreciate our tradition and culture. It's so rich, it's so rich, it's so deep, it's so complex that you know even just learning a small aspect of it imparts them with so much of the culture, whether they do it for a few years, whether they then go on to perform in our patron, or whether they do it simultaneously even with ballet. My daughter was learning ballet for a while, stopped, and it so happened that she seems to be more getting more into Bharatanatyam and Carnatic music, whether it's genetic, whether it's my influence to a large extent that I'm doing it with them. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, but it's given them more of an insight into Indian tradition as a whole, not only just the way we celebrate festivals and other things, but this is... This form of art is like an ocean, the deeper you get into it, you get so much. If you want to learn more, you want to learn more, you aspire for more. So it is like that, it's so rich, our culture is rich and this form of art is like it just gives us so much. So you've got a great responsibility. How do you feel? I mean, you said you didn't start off teaching, but now you're beginning to teach all these people. How does it feel? It feels very good. I thoroughly enjoy with my students. Um, so one thing I want to say about this arrangement. I don't teach my students with the intention of doing arrangement for them. I teach them, and there comes a point when we talk about arrangement on our own. We don't. We don't say, okay, now that we have done these many choreographies, we start talking about it. It doesn't work like that. It evolves. It, then the process of, dis we discuss and then the process starts. So when I teach, I just teach just for the pressure of teaching my students and they enjoy learning. Most of my students come to me because they want to learn the dance. They don't ask me when they do their ringet. They don't come to me with that question. And any student who comes and asks me that question, I say, please, First you learn. So Arangetram is just a milestone. So you must have loads of students now. Yes, I do. How do you cope with it? I mean, where do you teach them? I teach in uh, different places. I, uh, my main classes are in Harrow, in Newman. Um, then I teach here in Patikar Association. I have class in Hot Church. So I have classes every week each day in different places. Students come to me for individual lessons as well in addition to group classes. So I do this on the seven days a week. So do you never have any rest? <laughs> <laughs> She's all the girl all the time. And it was hers in the summer, then mine. Yes. And then she had her annual day, 19th and 20th, had just gone last week. And then there's Tom. And she's got another one in December with Kobe she is going. She's a shy Yeah. Okay. And then she's got Nina's in April. So I think it's. And um, this year has been particularly busy. I don't think yes. she had this many. So it's really, uh, you know. On the 19th, I presented all the students who have done a uh, target in the last decade, the last 10 years. Starting from Ahal, there were seven students performed. I, all the students were very busy with their own work. She was busy, she had her kids, and she had done her arrangement job. It was easy putting them together, giving them the right time, and considering the choreography that would suit all of them, that they would enjoy practicing together. It was very difficult. But then, each one wished me. All of them wanted to do well. And it is that interest in my students that keeps me going. You know, I enjoy, I thoroughly enjoy every bit, every minute I spent with them. And did you teach any boys? Mm, one or two boys wanted to join my group class, but uh, some uh, parents were not very comfortable having boys students in group classes. So I told them to come for private class, but till now I have not. <laughs> Why are they not comfortable? Well, in Italy I had senior adults. Uh, I, I, Italy? Yes. Because you teach in Italy too. Um, my association with uh, Italy goes back to 1981. I was teaching in Paris when I was I invited to teach in Bergamo by a contemporary theatre group. It's called Theatre of Theatre with Tasca Vietti Bergamo. It's a theatre group in Bergamo in North Italy. Um, till now I'm associated with them. I've been teaching art, the actors of the theatre group. Then uh, in the 80s I used to teach male artists of the theatre group. Very serious. We have done performance in Bergamo. I teach in Rome also, where my senior student has a school, so I teach there. So who's your senior student in Rome? Uh, she's uh, an Italian in Rome. She has her center, Kala Sagra Roma. 
So you, you have a concentration all over the place here in, in, in Europe. All over Europe. No. Like I, I was living in Switzerland for two and a half years. Oh, this is so. another place, yes. Then, <laughs> 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 um, a Swiss student, she learned, and she's teaching, I think she's teaching even now. Um, she used to perform, and uh, now I'm teaching in Rome and in Bergamo. I used to teach in Paris, now I don't have time. Recently I went to Latvia to give workshops. So I go for workshops, I give classes. Students come to me to learn, to learn new choreographies. Some Italian students come to me, one of my Italian students, uh, she's doing PhD in dance in, uh, in Cambridge University. So in terms of your costumes, how do you prepare physically um, you know, your, um, all your well, costumes and accessories and all that, the hair and the makeup? Because um, that's quite an important factor as well, isn't it? So okay. how, do you, how do you prepare? First of all, how do you choose the costume? Like you're saying that your costume is yes. just one costume. Yeah, because it's not like the way I'm having one. Because of one reason we don't have a proper dressing room to change. <laughs> in Chidambaram, the back, of, in Chidamba, the back of the stage. Yeah, he's, uh, you're asking about my arrangement, yes. So, um, so we think, okay, go with one. And um, But the jewelry should be a temple jewelry. Normally that's the culture, we wear the temple jewelry. Um, and uh, when it's come to makeup, we, some students they can do by themselves. Sometimes we have a proper makeup parties. From my meeting, we had a proper makeup parties. <laughs> For all our pictures, we have proper makeup parties. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I have a professional makeup artist to do the makeup for our engagement. Yes. Before that, we are in for a photo shoot. During the photo shoot, we decide as to how to do the makeup and what sort of makeup and what sort of um, hair do we want to do. Uh, much before the photo shoot, we, we, we consider the costumes. How did we go about it, uh, yeah. uh, I think obviously there's always been a tradition in terms of the costume and temple jewelry as written in the dance books like Abhinaya as in a style of how you should prepare yourself for a performance. So with that in line of tradition, um, I think usually we would go to India to, to stitch the costume um, for your measurements because there isn't really um, a tailor here that can prepare a costume to that standard, so as far as I know anyway. So usually, you know, there are, we go to India, we, we stitch the costumes, you purchase a sari, um, essentially, that you really like, um, and then that sari is then made into a costume for your measurements. Uh, and also there, you buy the, um, the temple jewellery. Um, in India, obviously, you'd have the original sort of jasmine flowers, but we're not able to, to get that here. And, for it to last, so we use sort of paper flowers as a resemblance of the the true true jasmine flowers. Um, it does take quite a while to prepare yourself for a performance, but uh, I think the finished product um, sort of adds to the whole composure of the program, um, and the makeup itself uh, helps you emote um, the, the various characters that you, you you try to portray in the performance. So how long does it take for you to get ready on the day? Um, I think it can take up sort of two hours in, in total to, to do from head to toe, sort of to put yourself together. Um, I, I don't think you realise that there's, an, there's a lot of effort to put in. It's not just the makeup and the costume and the jewellery, but also other things, such as um, altar, which is sort of a red dye that we put on our hands. To, to show the precise positions of the, uh, the hand gestures that we show. Um, so there's sort of very intricate details um, to, to reach the finished sort of outcome that we're looking for. Oh, one, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. One thing we keep in mind, it depends on the main composition that the, uh, the dancer performs on the day of her engagement. For example, she did a composition on Shiva for her Varna, which is the main composition. So, I asked her to choose a red costume which will go with Shiva. And uh, if, it is, if the Padam is on Krishna, then we go for blue color. Krishna is blue in color. If it is a composition on Murga, we go for green. If it is on Ambar, we go for red. Uh, red and gold, if possible. Like that, we try to choose colors that will go with the composition and the deity that we put in the composition as, as much as possible. So we keep that in mind. And then once the colors are decided, we choose the design of the costume as well. 
So first we start with classical pyjama style, which is a traditional uh, design. And then the, the second half, if it is uh, a composition based on maternal love, then it would be um, a skirt type costume or a sari style costume, which would portray her like a mother. Mm -hmm. So we keep the, the, the character that we portray while designing the costume. And then the student goes to India with um, Jayashree, I was in India when she chose. I chose the costume for her. Oh, she told me the color, I chose the costume and designed. Yes. I made the costume for her. But the jewels, when she bought in India, I, I was with her. And uh, Jayashree got everything done on her own. When I was going to go, I went with her mother to buy everything. But uh, we always have a preliminary discussion about what to do, in which design we are going to do. And then once they go to the tailor shop, sometimes if they find some interesting picture or photo, then they ask me if it is okay. Then also it depends on the height. Um, if the student is short, I suggest a, a vertical striped costume. If she's uh, tall, then something horizontal and striped bands and so on. So a lot of thought process goes into designing the costume. And the jewels as well. So do you change your jewels when you change your costume? Some students do. <laughs> yeah, you, you can do, but it's not a must. Um, I think the, the style of jewellery is, is similar, with subtle differences. So it's not more about, you know, showing off different types of jewellery. It's, uh, it's more a tradition in itself, so it, it's up to each person, I think. But I think JC changed quite a few. Yeah, I think just like the Halia said, you don't, the, the core jewellery that's, you know, the core jewellery that you wear remains the same. You might change certain small bits here and there to enhance the colour of your costume or something, but the, by and large, the, the structure of what you, you know, the base remains the same because you don't have that much time in between the different items. The costume changes have to be quite quick as well. And that's that's a totally different subject in itself. <laughs> you can't <laughs> quite well enough here. Some students want to change. Uh, several times. Some students want to make seven costumes, eight costumes and two. I don't allow that. In India, they do with the two or three costumes, not more. One before the interval, one after the interval, that's it. At the most, three. So I try to stick to three. If it requires something extra, four. Not more than four. So what's the symbol like, symbolism behind the temple cost, um, jewelry? Sorry? What's the symbolism behind the temple jewelry? That is traditional. Temple jewelries are traditional jewels. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say anything. Because you mentioned colours. Ah, temple jewelries are maroon in colour. Silver base, dipped in gold, gold polished, with uh, maroon stones, semi-precious stones um, in them. These jewels uh, enhance the bhava. They go with the bhava because I don't uh, recommend white stones because white stones can be um, dazzling on the stage, but the bhava may not be. Uh, the bhava will not be that um, pronounced, I think. Mm -hmm. When you have um, two bright jewels, for example, the, the nose ring, the round one, I, I tell my students to avoid because that can uh, reduce the details of the bar. So I let them wear only the press and the drop here. And the, the, the temple jewels enhance the beauty of the dancer and at the same time embellish the, 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 the bhava, intensity of bhava is more um, pronounced when they perform with the temple jewelry. Yeah, maybe it's something to do with the white and the gold aspects of it, you know. Gold and maroon go with any color of costume. Going with the skin tone and also skin tone. going out, yeah, sort of tend to uh, sort of accentuate all of the costume because there's gold in the costume as well. So they, if you're rather no, I wouldn't fashion. say that it is only about the exactly. costume, it is about bhava. Maybe it's the bhava I'm saying. So if, if, some, some, if the degree of bhava mm -hmm. is more powerful when the jewelries are more reduced, uh, the, the shining is reduced, your face is the main part. and. Uh, and I would say, uh, rather than the costumes and jewelries, you give more uh, important to the artistic role in the dance. The people are there to enjoy your form of art, 
Um, of course, the jewelries and the um, costumes are going to help you no, no, to enhance your dance. That is fine. Yeah, yes. That is fine exactly what he is asking about. Uh, temple jewelry in particular. Yes. Temple because the temple jewelry has yes, more to say. Yes. It, 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 it enhances the beauty of the dancer and yes. at the same time, Bhagava is better when you have temple jewelry than when you have jewels with white stones. Yes. Mm. And also eye makeup forms an essential part of Paratnatya because to show the rasas, the emotions, expression, eye makeup forms a very vital part of it. I was about to ask you, how do you choose your makeup artists? Ah, I, I see, um, I ask her for some pictures and I see the, the video of the performances of dancers who have done with her makeup and then I decide. Also, I ask her to do one uh, photo shoot and then at that time I decide to how she does. So, do you not use the same makeup artist? Yes. Luckily, I have found a very good one here, yeah. and she does well. Yeah, so she specializes in a lot of that. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Oh, that was quite substantial. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to, to add? Well, about the adding it in your name. Uh, about your life. Yes. As a, as a yes. Society. Uh, finally, we can say it's a milestone in the learning process of dance, and. It, it will help you to recognize as a dancer and it draw a fine line uh, being a student to turning into a professional artist. So I think it will take you gradually to the next level of the dance where you improve your knowledge of the dance in detail regarding the Baba and Tala and more details uh, in the Tala. Mm, and the raga based, and you get to know ragas, and especially the choreography. And you, after that, we, we become much closer to our gurus, and they know that we are up to a certain standard, and they, they will start to teach about more details. It's, it will help to take to the uh, like performing art based, and yeah. <laughs> it is a performing art, and uh, I would like to after that a little group with the with, uh, teacher's blessing and had I not done it, I think a past part of me would have been missing. So I'm really glad, really glad that I'm able to learn back again from when Kushaji six years back and I had learned as a child and then it was a long day because I had my kids and all that because of my education and stuff. So I, I hope to, I hope to do justice to the art for the on a personal note, I must say this. When I started, my sister was already dancing. She had her arita when she was 14. And at that time, I asked my mom to put me to dance class. That's how I joined my dance class. My mother was, uh, my mother also learned carnatic music and uh, dance, but she wasn't allowed to even sing. Those days, uh, women were not allowed to sing in front of audience from traditional families. It was, uh, it was considered um, not good for girls from respectable families to perform or sing in front of uh, the public. She wanted uh, my sister, my two sisters, and me to at least learn this. So she put me in dance class. I did my Arangetan in 1969, and then my sister started Kala Samra in Madras. So this time she had graduated in dance and music. When she started, I was helping her. So I enjoyed it. When she was teaching, I used to sit and watch and I enjoyed uh, the way she was teaching. I, 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 I really loved it, the way she I picked up from her teaching. And then, uh, even then, I was not interested in teaching. I wanted to be a dancer. So I had my animation in 69 and then I went into performances. I came to Paris in 1980, before which I went to Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand to do performances. Then I came to Paris, that was the first break I had in the West. I stayed in Paris for eight months, I was teaching. Then the theatre group from Italy invited me, I went to Bergamo. And from Bergamo, the, I was invited to Rome and then I've been teaching in uh, different cities in Europe. But even then, I used to give workshops. I was not having my center. I was just teaching 
to those who were interested in learning, those who were coming to me, only in UK, after, after this Arangetram, after Ahalya Sarangetram, people started asking me to teach in um, full swing here. So th after that I started my class here, Kalasagara UK here. Thankfully it's going well and I have come across very good students, very committed students. Uh, it's such a pleasure working with them. As I told you before, I take my students just for the pleasure of teaching them and then if they want to do a term, that is when we start talking about uh, what to do, how to do, how to go about it. It takes at least one year for us to plan and uh, prepare for the arrangement. The intensive starts. So how many students do you think have come through our engagement with you? Um, I think 10, I don't remember the number, 9, 10. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I bet you've got loads more students, haven't you? So You've got loads more students? Yes, I don't think all of them will do a No. The last 10 years I have had plenty of students who have learned with me but not have done Arangetra. So I don't push them to do Arangetra. If they are happy with learning, fine. And I give them a chance to perform on the stage, but in group. So all, all my students get a chance to perform in the annual day celebrations that I do. So they get to perform. But Arangetra, as they have been saying, it's a milestone. Up to Arangetra, you are a good student. After Arangetra, you, on the day of Arangetra, you prove that you are a good dancer. Then, after that, you become a dancer. Until then, you are a good student. The transformation starts there. So that is the test. A very tough it's test. Job. It's page one. Yes. Students know how difficult it is. Those who have done Arangetra know what it is. Teachers know what it is. And that is why the special recognition for students who have done Arangetra. That's why I choose students who do Arangetra. Because just because student wants to do Arangetra, I don't say, okay, you go ahead. No. I just assess the student. I see if she's capable of doing it. Arangetra because it's a big responsibility. She's capable of plunging into this, she's capable of performing, and what is she going to do after Arangetra? So I think about all that and then I decide. 